What's up guys, it's me again. So today I wanted to show you a couple of cool things you could do with the inner function. And even if you don't know what the inner function is, I'm going to show you exactly how to use it in this video. Before I begin, standard function is simply a wrapper that lets you store callable objects. Now, a callable object is anything that we can call like a function. So for example, a lambda expression, a functor, a normal function, those are all callable. So anyways, how do we use standard function? Well, first we need to know the signature of the function that we're going to store. And if we have a function that accepts an end and returns nothing, then the call signature of the function would look something like this. So let's uh, take a look at an example of how to use standard function. So let's define a function that returns nothing. I'm going to call this foo. And this function is going to accept an int. And I'm going to call this uh, int x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to print out x. Okay, great. So to store this function, keep in mind, this function returns void and it accepts an index. To create a std function with the signature, we are going to do function. And I'm going to call this f and I'm going to assign it to who. So to run this, all we are going to do is going to type f, and then we're going to pass in some number. So I'm going to pass in 5. And let's execute this. And as you would expect, we got 5 back. Now you can always run your function like normal, like this. And it will do basically the same thing. Okay. Now let's try doing the same thing with a lambda expression. So instead of assigning a function to f, what we can do is we can assign a lambda to this f. So we can say, let's write a little lambda expression. So we're going to type out. And now what we did is we took this lambda and we assigned it to f. Now we can print out a number. So we can just call it like this. So we can call it with 5. I'm going to click F5 and... There we go. So we got five back. Now keep in mind, an easier way of storing simple lambdas like this would be doing something like this. As you can see, instead of using a function, which does come with some overhead when you call it, uh, we are just storing this in foo, which is just automatically deduced at compile time. So we are assigning this lambda to this foo. So we're automatically deducing the type at compile time here instead of doing this with a function. Now, if we can do this with a lambda, we can also do this with a functor. So let's define a struct. And as you can see, we can use this with a struct just the same way that we did with a lambda and with a function. So what I'm trying to show you is that we can store any kind of callable object in std function as long as the function signature matches. So the only thing you have to worry about is, is this signature matching what the function is doing? And, and if it is, you will be able to store anything inside of this and call it, as long as it's callable, of course. Now we can use a std function as a parameter in a function. So for example, so what we're going to do is going to type out void foo, and we are going to accept any callable that has a certain signature. So we're going to say function void int. And I'm going to call this func. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making a function that accepts a parameter that has a signature that returns nothing. So basically what we're doing here is we're accepting anything that accepts an int, oops, that accepts an int, 
and returns nothing. So it has to return void and accept an int. So the function you pass in here has to accept an integer and return nothing. So basically here we just say func and then I'm going to call this with five. And to use this, uh, what we can do is, let me just delete this. And to use this, I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say auto And I'm going to call this with foo. And when we call this with foo, I am just going to pass in our lambda. And our lambda is called lambda. And let's execute this. And we got five back. That's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, we can do the same thing with a uh, function. So let's define a new function up here. So as you can see, we can either pass in a function, so this function, as long as it returns nothing and it's uh, it accepts an int, or we can pass in a lambda. And, and we can also pass in a struct as well. So if we want, we can pass in a struct that has an overloaded call operator with, uh, that has an overloaded call operator that accepts an int. Another use of std function is to create a container that can store callable objects. So, for example, we can write something like this. This vector will be able to store and call any callable as long as its signature matches the one defined. This is a good solution if we want to store Lambda expressions in a collection. For example, we can do bf.pushback. Now, the problem with lambdas is that every single lambda you define will have a unique type. But with std function, you're able to store lambdas of various types as long as the call signature matches. So as long as the parameters you pass in and the return that you get is the same, you can still, even if they have a different type, you can still store them in vector. And also, this works for stateful lambdas. So for example, I can do something like this. Say back. And let's make a stateful lambda. So at the stateful lambda, I'm going to say m is equal to 5 and x. And I'm going to see out m and then I'm going to see out x. So let's uh, call these functions. I'm going to say vf 0. I'm going to call this with 5. I'm going to say vf 1. And I'm going to call this with. Uh, I guess 10. So let's execute this. So what do we get? Okay, so we got five and we got five because simply we're putting out five. And here we are getting five because I assigned M to be five and I'm using M in here. Then we're getting 10 and we're getting 10 because I passed 10 as the X for this uh, Lambda. So we're getting 10 here. Now, keep in mind, calling a function from std function is a little slower compared to doing it natively, so don't overuse this feature. That is basically all for this video. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this one, and I will see you later.